Hello watch fans, we're back with another great watch review for you today. This is the Casio AQS800W-1BGH and it is I think a Japan only model, at least I got this one from Japan. And they're pretty affordable, 6,050 yen, which is about 60 US dollars. And um, it's it's uh, part of their entry level line, which is not, you know, below G-Shock. But this is this is actually a, a tough solar watch, which is I think if you're familiar with the channel, one of my favorite things. Have a solar quartz because you never need a battery. Uh, it's not going to go dead on you when you're on vacation or just randomly uh, wearing it one day. And it's uh, also tough too because Casio has a kind of a bit of a way of underselling its watches. You know, they want to, for marketing purposes, they want the G Shock to stand out as the the rugged, you know, indestructible watch. But I found that even their pretty affordable watches um, are amazingly well built. And this one is no exception. It's um, it doesn't feel high quality. The the plastic is you know pretty cheap and. Kind of, you can even tell just the the cheap kind of mineral crystal. I think it's mineral. It might be acrylic. Even it's pretty, pretty lightweight. Um, so it doesn't have a feeling of quality, but I really have no no worries about this watch holding up to, to the toughest abuse. You know, being banged around and swimming, and you know, if you're hitting it on stuff, playing sports, I don't think it'll be a problem whatsoever. Um, there's a couple reasons why I have gravitated towards this watch. Obviously, I've had a ton of sports watches, field watches, uh, luxury watches on the other extreme. And I think as you own so many watches, <laughs> you really just want the watch to do what it's designed to do, which is to tell the time and to make it as easy as possible. And perhaps a few secondary functions. So the first thing, other than the being just the solar power and the reliability, is this is a highly legible watch. I think um, the longer I go on, the more I just want the watch to be instantly recognizable at a glance. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm getting away from style for style factor. They're, of course, those watches have their place, but you know, for something. Um, every day, it's it should have numbers on it. I think uh, the bolder, the better. A nice high contrast dial. I love this, this the deep black dial with the white lettering. Super easy to see the time at a glance. Um, it also has pretty pretty okay loom. You know, it's this is not a level of a Seiko loom or, or some of the micro brand looms, but for Casio, it's actually above average. Um, I'll just charge it up a little bit. You can see. This is obviously still in the daylight here, but uh, it has a, you know, it's definitely, you can you can see it for a few hours after you, you go to bed at night, which is kind of the, the pivotal time, you know, <laughs> if you wake up and you're like, is it morning or is it still, you know, 1 a.m.? So that's that's pretty handy. And also the high contrast helps at night too. It does, it does glow faintly through the night, you know, so in an emergency or say you were, actually you know diving or you know needed to see the time you know underwater it, it definitely serves that purpose um and, and again for the price you know you're not going to get better loom for for 60 bucks so that's a, a pretty you know uh, on average uh, uh, result it's better than say a casio duro or other similarly priced watches so i think it it's your number one choice for loom at this price and that's why I've kind of you know I mean I've searched for kind of the perfect vacation field watch for a long time and this this guy is I'll just cut to the chase is, is now top of the heap um, another function I really like about it is is the the analog digital display so here I have it with uh, world time and that's the Hawaii time um, you do lose the seconds counting um, indicator there but it, it, it is moving here one one per second for each bar and then I'll just run through the uh, the modes so we've got alarms and I think there's four alarms here two three five alarms uh, let's see here a timer so you do a timer stopwatch and then you have uh, your date and the seconds too if you don't care about the world time so that's very handy if you you know you're just wearing this every day and you're not tracking a second time zone. But uh, there's the uh, solar power level, and 
but I obviously like the world time, uh, particularly because this is, a, you know, my category of this watch is travel watch. So you're, you know, if you're always in a different place, it's always nice to have the home time and the world time um, simultaneously displayed. So you can kind of think about, you know, if you got to make a phone call back home or, you know, is someone waking up or versus being, you know, dark in their, their time zone, it's really handy just to kind of see the two at, like on the same display without having to push a button, have the hands move. A lot of the luxury watches, they make you do that and you have to wait for them to spin around for like, you know, a minute or two to get to the new, like the, the second time zone. That just seems like kind of a stupid way of doing it. I do love a GMT hand, but it's very hard to find a GMT watch anywhere near this price. And certainly anything as thin as this, the problem with the GMT watches is they're all like 12 and a half, 13 and a half millimeters thick. This guy is much, much thinner. I forget the dimension, but it's around 10, just over, you know, 10 millimeters thin. So it's, it's really a very, very comfortable watch to wear. Super lightweight. By far the lightest watch I've ever owned is probably, you know, 50 grams. Um, I don't, I don't feel the need to weigh it because it's just like it's 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 like air it has no weight whatsoever you don't even notice it when you're wearing it um, I like the uh, perforated band here just uh, again if you're swimming or you're you're working it lets the uh, the moisture evaporate really easily um, the strap is soft it's it, it's actually better than I think the G-Shock straps it's uh, a little more pliable um, I like that because I find the G-Shock straps sometimes they just the watch kind of bows out on your on your arm unless you have a really big arm. This guy really kind of hugs the wrist better. I'll put it on here briefly and you can see it. Um, it's got the black clasp and keeper, so it's kind of a, a stealthy look. I like that. It uh, definitely goes under the radar. Uh, you see there my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It's really, you know, really comfortable to wear. It doesn't move around, but it's not tight. It's not constricting. Again, a super lightweight makes it feel like it's just, you know, there's, there's nothing there. Um, I think the strap probably is not going to last forever. So I have ordered two um, additional straps off eBay. There's tons and tons of Casio aftermarket straps or, or even just straps for other Casio watches that will fit this, uh, this lug width. I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I'm guessing that's like 16 millimeters or something there. It's kind of a weird Casio strap, but because it is a standard case, you could put any strap that would fit that width on there and just with the standard spring bars. So that's really handy. Um, it does have a, a little light up. Oops, not on that one there. Uh, let's see. Go back here. Yeah, so you can see the kind of orange, orangey glow there if you want to really see the second uh, digital display in the dark. Um, and the rest of the buttons, they're just kind of typical Casio. If you've seen one Casio video, you're pretty much going to know how to use the watch. Got your adjust up here, the most down here, your light, and the uh, kind of the uh, toggle up or down for the, the uh, individual settings for these two buttons. So yeah, this is, um, you know, I'm trialing it. It's not the most beautiful watch. You know, it's obviously black plastic. It's not high end, um, but uh, I'm, you know, I don't think it's going to be an only watch for me, obviously, um, but I am trialing it as kind of the do everything but look, you know, dressy. So I have another watch that I'll do a review on shortly, and I think kind of you could maybe get away with a two watch collection between this and then a super, you know, kind of luxury, durable watch too. So that's kind of an upcoming video. But um, yeah, so far I'm pretty enamored with this. It has a, it has a certain character to it. Some of the cheaper, cheaper Timexes or Casios are just so dull that you can't really love them. This one I'm already, you know, have a bit of affinity towards, which is, uh, which is a good sign at the beginning. So I think, you know, as I live with it and uh, it goes on some adventures with me, it may, it may also increase that factor. And um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll check in maybe in, uh, in six months or so and, and let you know how it's going. So once again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more watch videos.